fairly good outcrop here. Okay, so we've gone around the, the bend. Okay, and we've come to the site here. Take a look at this rock. What do you think it is? <laughs> you didn't like the fact that we figured it out. <laughs> okay, what's his mineralogy? There's um, orthopyroxene. Biogite. What zone is this? Okay, it's a charnakite, eh? Chan what? Charnakite. Charnakite. Okay, C H A R N O K I T E. As with every rock, it's got a mite on the end of it. Okay, it's a granitoid or a granite, essentially. But the definition of a chonakite is that it is a orthopyroxene bearing granite. Okay, so unusual in that respect. Okay, if you look at this rock, particularly on the fresh face, you can see these very large inner crisps of alkali feldspar. Okay, like orthoclase. Now, normally in a granite, what you see with um, the feldspars would be that they are a creamy color or a pinkish brown color. But yeah, you can see that they're very dark. Eh? What was that? And some people think the reason is that these rocks are very iron. Yeah. So the iron is actually made of black. Which are the iron? Um, Iron is actually held up in the lattice of black rocks. That's what made it black like that. Okay, so um, it does have pyroxene in it, but not very much. Okay, only between 1 to 2 percent of the actual rock is pyroxene. Okay, so it's still a granite. So you've got the alkali feldspars, you've got quartz, there's a little bit of biotite. Okay, not much in the way of mafic minerals. What also characterizes these rocks is that they're very rich in the large iron lip file element. You guys know what goes on. Okay, like rubidium, strontium, barium, potassium, and also the high field strength elements like zirconium, hafnium, niobium, tantalum, all those sort of elements. Okay, because they're iron rich, they actually sit in the A type field. Okay, A type grants. A type grants are basically stand for anorogenic grants. But the A type grants field is actually a bit of a complicated field in that you often find them within a tectonic environment, like, like extensional environments or post collisional environments. Okay, so essentially they could, they probably, this, this forms part of the spectacle suite. Okay, similar to what you saw around the corner. Okay, and compositionally this granite is the same as what you saw around the corner. Okay, so just to show you that you can't base um, <coughs> rock classification on color. You wouldn't think this is a granite, would you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like we told you in first year, don't base anything really on color. You need to actually look up close, look at what the mineralogy actually is. Okay. Just a question. Yep. The iron in the independent crystal, the oxidizer, maybe by the way. Oh, you can see actually if you look at some of the phenol crystal on the surface, they actually are reddish. Depends how long was it. Okay, but unlike, for example, the bush flood plants where you actually have little hematite within crystal lattice which is oxidized and made those, those cell spots very red, it seems to be that this is a pervasive type of iron in the actual rock. Yeah.
anorogenic. The A stands for anorogenic. Anorogenic. Okay, um, let's see what else. So you can actually get charnakite forming in two different ways. The one is by magmatism, okay, in which case you've actually had dry melting, okay. There was no water available for melting and under granulite fasces metamorphic conditions you can actually get melting to give rise to granite okay, like this which has got a, a composition this is a monzo granite okay, similar to what we saw around the corner of oh, okay, the show it's a bit different a little bit different okay so that's the one way you can actually form the charnakite the other way is metasomatic Metosomatic. Remember from third year? Yeah. Well, you're actually having fluids flushing through the system. In this case, you're actually having carbon dioxide fluids, or rich fluids, flushing through your rock and driving off water. In the presence of the carbon dioxide, then, you actually have um, chanakatization of your country rocks. Okay, so that is a metasomatic or metamorphic type of of chanakatization as opposed to a magmatic. But this is magmatic. Okay, in other words, it crystallizes out of the melt. Okay. Um, unfortunately, because you can't get into the quarry, um, on some of the blocks, you'll see, like around the corner there, that some of the phenocrysts actually are partly aligned. Okay, so like what you saw around the corner, um, this granite's basically crystallized with some partial stress being, sub or being subjected to some partial um, stress field. Okay, so it's late to post tectonic. Okay, so a lot of the foliage, sort of like the alignment of the phenocrysts, has to deal with a magmatic type of foliation. So largely it's unfoliated. Okay, so this forms part of the spectacle suite. Let me see if you gave me an age. Don't think so. No, you didn't. No, you did. Okay, it's 1055 million years old. Okay. So let me pull out the classification. Yep. So you say there's two, two ways that the uh, channel kite can form? Yes. It's magmatic because it actually has contacts with the surrounding country rock. And when it's metasomatic, you actually find it more localized. Okay, whereas this is quite large bodies. And you'll see that if you look around, all this sort of chocolatey brown outcrop, like over there is the charnakite. Okay, so if you see a, a very dark chocolatey brown type of weathered surface, <laughs> that is the charnakite. Okay, now in the case of, um, this is called the Klein Lieslap Chano Endobite. <coughs> Can you smell it? Okay, Klein as in Afrikaans small. Okay, so K-L-E-I-N. Okay, and then Lieslap is L-I-E-S-L-A-P. What have you got there? Lieslap. Okay, so if we go back to our QAP diagram. Lieslap. You guys behind all this now. Um, that's the one with a black circle. Okay, so it sort of plots between Monzo granite into Reno diorite. Okay, so compositionally very similar to what we saw around the bend there. Okay, so granite diorites have a little bit more plagioclase than they do alkali feldspar. Okay, so when we're talking about granite diorites in terms of chonakites, there's actually a special well, if you go to tonalites, tonalites have actually got far more plagioclase than they do alkali feldspars. 
when we're talking about the China kite family, the equivalent of a tonalite is called an endobite. Okay, it's spelled E N D E R B I T E. If it's a monzo granite, the equivalent would be a chonokite. If it's sort of a got granodiorite type of composition, it's called a chono endobite. Okay, sort of in between. So you can see some of them plots in the granodiorite field. So this would be a chono kite slash chono endobite. If you want to get technical. Okay, but for your purposes, you just call it a kite. <laughs> Plus it amounts to the same thing. Essentially. Um, okay, anything else to say? Uh, no, pretty much. Just to take note that to, to a large extent it, it essentially has the same sort of chemistry as what you saw around the, the corner and the same kind of chemistry as what you're going to see with the algon nices of the little Macalan suit. Okay, so again, when you mapping these granites or granitoids, shall we say. The only real distinguishing feature between the spectacle suite and the little Macalan suite is the fact that the, the spectacle suite is largely unfoliated, has got no foliation <coughs> and is late to post tectonic. Okay. That's a spectacle. That's a spectacle. So it has an age of around ten fifty five million years. Uh, Prof, um, Prof, yep. just a question. Uh, while we were reading the uh, geology of this area, but the information that was given to us was stated that it's still unapproved. Now, how do we know for sure that they um, uh, are actually viable? You so? mean like SACS? Yes. Okay, SACS stands for South African Committee of Stratigraphy. They basically, now if you're going to call a granite something in an area, say like yeah they want to call it the clean less like chonakite and you actually got to go to this committee and say I want to call it this chonakite in that area that name or do you approve that name okay and then they will look at the criteria for naming a particular granite or a particular formation or a particular group or whatever and they will say okay it doesn't uh, there's no other name of that kind anywhere else it matches um, a plot or a farm or whatever in that area and the type of localities on that farm so it's fine you can call it that okay because people you know you want to name a particular rock type in a particular area you give it a name like a formation name or a sweet name or whatever so they need to check that it actually corresponds to certain rules but the problem has been in the past with various workers that have mapped in the area and they're like oh, I'm gonna call it you know Yansa or whatever you know, <laughs> and then they just put it into their thesis or whatever or whatever <laughs> what piece of research <laughs> and then somebody later on comes, comes along and says oh, I want to call it plain less love Jonakite okay so you get all these numerous names and then people who come later on get all confused as to what it's actually called okay so that's why they want to approach the, the sex committee and say we want to call it this and make it a proper name but it still has to be approved essentially that's what this thing is those are the alkaline not not in crystal yeah that's when it felt so normal okay one other thing that I think, uh, you can see that these phenocrysts crystals are. Let's listen up. Phenocrysts crystals are largely euhedral. They're not recrystallized. Okay, you'll see when we finally get around to little um, Macquarie Suite in two stops time that you've got the phenocrysts have been drawn out and elongated into algon. Okay, and in those algon, the actual um, feldspar has been recrystallized into smaller little portions of, or smaller grains within the actual album. Whereas yeah, these uh, phenocrysts are still a single original grain that they were when they crystallized. Okay, so another feature which helps you to distinguish um, the spectacle suite from the little Macquarie suite. Okay. <coughs> 
Any questions? Um, Dr. Bailey, yep. why are they shining like that? Because of the cleavage <laughs> in the felt spot. Oh. So it's, <laughs> it's a cleavage surface you see in it, essentially. Okay. <laughs> Remember, felt spars have got a, a cleavage, well, the cleavage surface. So because they're large like that, you actually see the pictures of the cleavage surface. Okay. Okay, but there's a little bit of bite out in here as well. Yeah. Yeah, everybody happy. Yeah, back to the Look at this. Next up, we'll start to get out of the fence.